So anybody have any testimonies they'd like to share while we're waiting for Brother Mike to come on? You have a testimony, sis? You want to come up and share? All right. Praise God. Miss Janelle's been coming for a while. She's been here before me. Oh, wow. <laughs> i never done this. Um, when I first came through the doors of hardcore Christianity, I was a super wreck. I was addicted to drugs, had a super abusive boyfriend that was, like, threatening to kill me. And um, I was high as a kite and just super not okay. And um, I walked through the doors. And it's funny because I didn't know how to get in. So I called my dad, who's in Montana, who led me here. And he said, well, just knock on the door. And I didn't know how Christian that was. So I knocked on the door in the middle of service and someone let me in. And um, I ended up staying um, for deliverance. And I didn't even know I was going to be delivered. I was like, I'm almost a doctor in psychology. You know, these people need help. I'm just going to stay because they need my help. I'm high as a kite. And um, as I'm sitting there, all of a sudden, I felt this tap say, go up there. there go. And I walked up, and Brother Mike just started saying, what's going on in there? And telling me stuff that no one should know. And um, then this big Indian guy, he's not here. I think his name was Wayne. He ended up working with me until 1230 at night. And um, the guy that was trying to kill me that I was with ended up getting arrested at 1 o'clock after my deliverance. So I didn't get killed. I have never been high again. I walked in the doors high as a kite, walked out sober as they come. And I've never gone back. Um, no relapses, no fallbacks. I've been tempted. People have tried to offer it to me. People have tried to give it to me, and I'm just like, no, I've been set free. And, I mean, I still have my struggles, but this place, it saved my life. I don't know where I'd be today if it wasn't for this place. And God. Wow. Wow. Give God praise. Come on. Give him praise. Come on. That's awesome. Amen. Well, we're welcome up, Brother Mike, to the floor. Thank you, Jesus, for the word that he's going to give tonight. Amen. All right. Good evening. <laughs> Africa. How you doing today? Okay. Yeah. You did good, good yesterday, didn't you? Praying real good. All right. Welcome to the Deliverance Center, YouTubers. May God bless you tonight. Um, our healing room is tomorrow. Our healing room is open tomorrow from 9 to 3. And this is our fourth one. All three of them have been booming. Several people healed and delivered every, every Saturday. Okay? First, second Saturday of every month, our healing room. Starting at nine o'clock. All right, and then there's our next seminar next month And don't forget I'm always on the radio Much to some people's chagrin Monday through Friday and now I'm on the weekends. Okay on 10 10 a.m uh, Youtubers you can always catch the radio programs 24 7 on uh, Omni FM. It's right on the website Click on there and they're all archived on there tomorrow as I mentioned is our Healing room. The healing and deliverance room is open tomorrow starting at 9 o'clock. From 9 to 3, no appointment necessary. If you want to donate money to us and don't have any money, you can do that. If you switch over from Google to Good Search and put in our charity name, Hardcore Christianity, they'll donate to us while you surf the web. We now have five YouTube channels. Live stream was discontinued. Our Thursday night uh, services are broadcast live on our fifth YouTube channel, the one on the bottom, Thursday Night Prayer live stream. Tonight's broadcast, of course, is on our number two channel, House of Healing AC. If you know somebody who needs to be delivered and they're too afraid to come for help, uh, just send me an email to mike at hardcorechristianity.com, and I'll be happy to send you one of these two lists for mentally ill Christians or troubled Christians. Okay. Friday night service is still live on YouTube, right? Yeah, Friday night. Yeah, it's on our YouTube. 
house of healing az channel and then thursday nights also on youtube but it's on the other channel live stream stopped uh stopped giving out free uh services they canceled them so we switched over to youtube all right and uh youtubers now your goal is to open up a terror cell at your church and what you do is you pick out two or three people who've gone through deliverance and you secretly start to pick off the sick people in your church and you just hunt them down and sick people are easy to spot there's plenty of them at your church churches are loaded with sick people and you start picking them off one at a time you take them to a separate location or a different room or something like that kind of set up as some kind of a system and They gradually start getting healed and delivered and then pretty soon you'll have So many people coming to you. You'll you'll need more people to help It'll start booming and it keeps getting bigger the pastoral staff will find out about it and then You'll get kicked out of the church <laughs> That's a sign from God you to start another terror cell somewhere else. So don't ever take a negative. Always make it a positive and give it to the devil. Right? Hey, our donation boxes are on the doors. The doors are locked. You cannot leave here until you donate. <laughs> and there they are. Do you need a donation receipt? This is the last week I'm going to ask you. Guess what D-Day is? Hell is coming to breakfast this weekend. It's tax day. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. I paid my taxes this year. My wife was none too happy about it. I'm on a special program. It's called the Working Wife Program. It's a, it's a special program the government gives certain people who are considered to be geniuses. <laughs> So my wife had to pay taxes this year, and uh, you know it's not a fun afternoon. I'll admit it, but it's better to pay them than it is to try and get out of it or pull a stunt. The IRS is a is a bad outfit. There's bad hombres over at the IRS, okay, and they will put. <laughs> you don't know. Yeah, they'll send you Josie Wales, and just pay it. Don't cheat the government. Don't cheat anybody now. Think about it. You're a born-again Christian If you cheat somebody here you lose rewards there. So you're actually cheating yourself Thank you for those rousing amens. I'll see you in Huntsville, Alabama. Hopefully they have some honest people there I'll be there on May 11th and 12th. That's gonna be a booming service. They have a deliverance uh, church there and they do deliverance there so they're um, they're used to it and uh, I went there two or three years ago and the pastor uh, Started deliverance after I was there Teaching for two or three days and they started up deliverance church And that's really my dream is to see these things pop up all over and this is one of them right here So I want to keep helping them and supporting them. All right. Let's get to the best part John chapter 13 <clears throat> As you well know, Jesus Christ had an incredible ministry, to say the least, the greatest ministry ever. And uh, everybody has to wind up their ministry. Sooner or later, their ministry comes to an end, and so did Jesus. As he switched gears and went from his earthly ministry to his, the ministry he has now, which is his heavenly ministry where he sits seated at the right hand of God. And when you pray, the Holy Ghost collects your prayers. He takes them to heaven, and the Lord Jesus intercedes for you when you pray. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father in the throne of heaven. And there he is. Amen. That's how the system works now. But back then, it didn't work that way. The Lord had his earthly ministry, and his ministry came to an end. And so he had to wrap up some loose ends, and he does it in John chapter 13. It's really fascinating. What would you have to do whenever you go on a trip or you're going to leave somewhere? You always have to pack. You always have to get the toiletries together. You got to get everything ready to go. And that's what Jesus did. He got everything. He got all of his ducks lined up in a row. And I thought it would be interesting if we go over that tonight. It was to me anyway. John 13, verse 1. Now, before the feast of the Passover, 
Jesus knew that his hour was come and if you recall uh, five different times in the New Testament Somebody would say something to Jesus or ask him to do something for example water to wine and he would make little comments like my hour is not yet come He'd say that several times. Well, guess what it finally came. This was his hour To save humanity and leave and go back to the father having loved his own in the world He loved them to the end and that's one of the wonderful things about Jesus uh, as soon as he starts loving you, there's nothing you can do to get him to stop. Amen. Oh, you can give him a good cousin. <laughs> you can call him a woof anytime you want, as long as you want. That's not going to change. Yeah? He's not like a human being. You cuss out a human being, you'll be in trouble. Oh, they're going to have some bad feelings about you. That's your partic particular if you're married. Oh, it doesn't go well. Yeah, Jesus would be hurt if you cussed him out, but he will love you to the end Amen. To the end Amen. He just said it right there Now as you know the preparation for the Passover was the day before so now we're talking about putting it in perspective This is Tuesday evening Tuesday evening As you remember he was tried and arrested and tried Tuesday night He was hung on the cross Crucified the following day nine o'clock he dies at Three o'clock correct and then he's buried later that day Right and he dies on the cross of Calvary the greatest event in Christianity where uh, The Son of God becomes our curses and our sins He doesn't just he carries them up Golgotha, but when they nail him to the cross he then becomes our sin he becomes a drug addict. He becomes a pedophile. He becomes a rapist. He becomes a terrorist a mass murderer. You name it. That was Jesus He became our curses witchcraft curses sorcery word curses Hate curses. any kind of that is what he became on the cross of Calvary incredible Carried our sins to Calvary up Golgotha and then became our sin when they nailed him to the cross in what a great story Incredible story all right now, so let's look at the uh, thing and put it in perspective real quick uh, As we see this thing wrap up we have uh, number one the Last Supper number two His teachings on the way to the Garden of Gethsemane Number three the Garden of Gethsemane where he's arrested and then his trial is after that and then he's crucified and uh, buried in that order John now we're on verse 2 it took a while to get to verse 2 but now I'm going to start rolling supper being ended the devil having put into the heart of Judas oh here's the deep revelation People don't just sin Okay Nobody does that it has to be in your heart first See, you don't just suddenly commit adultery bang I'm committing you don't no, 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 no Adultery starts in here first thoughts emotions passions You don't steal something no, 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 no you stole it here first then you stole it physically you don't give somebody a good cussing. No, you hated them in here first, then you gave them a good cussing. Hello? First it starts in your heart, then it comes out in your behavior. <clears throat> it starts in your heart, and a chemical may, chem may make it come out quicker. It's in your heart, and bottle of Jack Might make it come out faster louder longer It starts in your heart and then Meth makes it come out Quite a bit differently Everything always starts in your heart if it's not in your heart. We call it a screw-up Screw-ups are not 
necessarily sins are they everybody makes mistakes <laughs> This thing on uh, A mistake is not something that you enjoyed and were celebrating and planning on doing oops That's an oops Okay, no, this was not an oops sinning is not an oops this is comes from the heart that's where the sin is it's in the heart okay. Hello, you didn't wake up a racist Did you I was, I was born a ray. I hate black people. No, dude uh -uh. That was put into your heart by Satan to hate people of different colors It's not an accident or an oops. He planted that in your heart to do it then you reacted verbally or physically. Judas had been long before this, the Bible says, he put it in his heart because Judas had the stain of greed on his soul. He liked money. He wanted material things. He wanted creature comforts. He wanted security. Mon the love of money is the root of all evil. Money allows you access to any kind of sin. If you don't have any money, there are certain sins you can't get involved in. Correct? If you're flat broke, you can go over to the escort service. Hey, I want a hot babe tonight. Why don't you drag yourself back to your tent you're living in? You're not getting a hottie tonight. You ain't got any money. Money allows you access to certain things. Drugs. You just don't go down to the Government say could I have some crack? No, you <laughs> jackass You got to give me some money and I'll sell you some crack you idiot money the love of money is money allows you access to sin It allows you to express what's in your heart The heart of Judas was gone before the last supper Okay. In between him being a faith healer and an evangelist and a superpower disciple, somewhere along the line, the devil got in. Happens all the time. One, one ministry scandal after the other all over the United States happens constantly. What happens? They're doing great spiritually. Things are going well, and but then the devil puts something into their heart. He looks inside. He sees a little stain on the soul there. He looks at the spirit man. He knows that's perfect, so he stays away from there. There's nothing to do about it. But the soul is far from perfect. He sees stains on the soul, and then he puts something in there to add to it. You're not listening. The devil can't put anything into you that he doesn't see a little stain in there to use. The devil looks inside you and he sees what's in there if there's nothing in there he don't put anything in there the devil unlike christians it's not stupid he looks for a little seed to work with in the soul and so he looks in there and see them. What's what seeds are in that person? Oh, I got lust in this one. I got bitterness in that one. I got some anger in this one. I got depression in this one. So he looks for these little seeds in the soul, and he come up with Judas greed, greed. He now put it into the heart of Judas to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands. And that he was come from God and he went, he's going back to God. Wow, what a statement. Can you imagine that? Jesus said, everything Father has is mine. I and the Father are one. I only do what I hear Father saying. I only do what I see Father doing. I and my Father are one. Everything he has is mine. What a statement. Verse 4, Jesus then rises from supper. Agairo means to stand up. What's that mean? They were eating what? 
Yeah, they're laying down. They're sitting down and eating. Uh, and he laid aside his hamatian, his garments. Now, this wasn't his clothes. He didn't strip down. He, this was his outer garment. You would take your outer garment off when you had to do something. He took his outer garment off, and it says, and he picked up a lentian, which is where we get our English word, linen. Picks up some linen, and he girds himself. You they tied it around here and left the flap over there like that. See the linen. So he took his robe off, picked up the gird, lean over so he can. Okay. Now, what's wrong with this picture? Well, there's all kinds of things wrong with it. This is <laughs> this thing's pathetic, but it's the most famous picture. I think it's Da Vinci's. Who, who painted that? Yeah, Da Vinci. This picture is a certified farce, but I tell you what, that guy was a great painter. I'll tell you what, so no matter what he painted, whether it was true or not, it doesn't look good. Looking great, great skills, great, great skills. This is a fiasco. There's no table there. They're not all facing this while they're watching a movie. The whole thing's ridiculous. But anyhow, here is more accurate scripturally of what exactly happened. They were all lo lounging on the floor, and they had these little tables in the center. So everybody worked around the center, and then you had little bowls here and there, food here, and different things, and so on. And they were all laying around like that. And it says he got up and girded himself. Then it says he pours water into a basin, and he begins to, to uh, niptoe the disciples' feet. That means wash a body part, wash one body part, okay? Bapto is where we get our English word baptism. That means to submerge. That's not the word used here. It's nipto. He's taking their feet and their feet only, and he starts to wipe them with a the towel, which was the job of who? The slaves did that. Remember, what's, what's going on here? Jesus is tying up all of his loose ends, ending his ministry. He's going to be arrested later that night. So he's got to get these last things in, the most important things, in before it's over. Because after he's arrested, it's all out of control from there. Jesus said, no one takes my life from me. I'm laying it down. Amen. Okay? But he knew once he laid it down, it was over. He was completely out of control. The devil took him from that moment and did everything he wanted to do for the last however many thousands or millions of years it was. I don't know when Satan fell. Could have been millions of years ago. But I'm sure after he fell, he hated his guts. And so now he's going to pay him back for all the years he's hated his guts. Hate is an incredibly powerful emotion. Hatred's incredible. Wars fueled by hatred. Just yesterday, some uh, psycho in Syria gassed a bunch of people, men, women, and children. What's behind that? Hate. What's behind that? Hate. Jesus says the same as murder. Hate is a monstrous emotion, and it's a hundred percent satanic. He hated Jesus. He butchered him. He wanted to pay him back. He'd waited centuries for this. And he overplayed his hand. We'll get to that in a minute. The slave, the slave's the one that wiped the feet off. Right? So if you're Jewish, what are you doing? Well, you got to take two baths in preparation for the Passover. So you've got bathing twice, but while you're walking around wearing sandals, your feet get dirty. So when you have your a memorial supper, the slaves come by at your dinner, at your friend's house, your relatives, whoever it may be, and then they wipe your feet off. So Jesus now is assuming the role of a slave. He's acting like a house servant. He's acting like somebody that parks cars. He's acting like a janitor. He's acting like somebody that sweeps up. And these are the most important things he has to do before he gets arrested. He's tying up all the most important loose ends here. One of them is, I have to act like a slave.
and there he is it's an actual photograph of him washing <laughs> these <laughs> and the person he washed the feet first I know this is gonna blow your mind it did mine Judas wow. the first person that got his feet washed was Judas he goes to Judas once again he'd done it several other times Given him every chance to get out of it. Let me tell you something there hath no temptation taken you But such as is common to man, but God is faithful He will not allow you to be tempted above that you're able but will with the temptation Also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear you don't understand you're sinning You had chances to get out of it You had every chance in the world to get out of it. You had every chance not to become an addict you had every chance not to whore yourself out. You had every chance not to go to hell. If you go to hell, you call over the Son of God to get there. You had every chance not to do it. He gave Judas chance after chance after chance not to murder him, not to betray him. Over and over he gave him. And his last chance was, I will become your slave. To save you and I will wash your feet oh, Brother Mike I see me get that hogwash Bullshoot yeah, I got you yeah, got you didn't I? yeah, that's good. I thought I was gonna get an email didn't you? That's crap you had every chance to change and you chose not to Judas had every chance to change Judas come here, buddy There's the anointing go heal the sick out the door he goes raise the dead while you're there my friend okay, Here Judas come here, buddy here. Here's the bag you take care of the money. I trust you here. Take care of the money Judas take it Judas Go down here. I want you to cast a demon on side. everybody in that neighborhood Go cast all the demons out. Judas ran down there casting demons out. Had every chance to change, every chance to make a difference, every chance to repent. You had every chance. Judas got another one. Judas, sit here. Oh, come on. I'll get on my knees and wash your feet like a slave. What's he doing here? The most important things he had to do to wrap his ministry up before he was arrested. He's getting ready to take a journey, and you always pack your bags. He comes to Simon Peter. Oh, he's the next one. We got Judas, Kook A, and we got Peter, Kook B. <laughs> he's got to tend to Peter. Both these human beings, Judas and Peter, instrumental. In our lives now Peter pipes up like he normally does I like Peter because he's a 50 50 guy 50% of the time he's looks like a complete ass the other 50% he's hitting a home run and knocking it out of the park I love Peter's my favorite now he right now he's falling apart his pride his arrogance pops up you washing my feet? No, no, you're not gonna wash my feet. Jesus said, You don't understand. I'm doing something now, but I'm trying to make a point that's very important later after I get arrested and I'm murdered and I raised from the dead. This point I'm trying to make is something you're gonna need the rest of your life. And if you don't learn this and don't understand this, Christianity is going nowhere. Verse numerous verses in the Bible, numerous times. God tries to get through to human beings over the issue of pride and vanity. It's Ebola to Christians. It's it's AIDS. It's it's a death sentence. Arrogance, pride, and vanity kills Christianity. 
It was the thing that cost Lucifer his kingdom. He had everything Anybody ever dreamed of having a hundred times more than Adam ever dreamed of having Lucifer had all Adam had and a hundred or thousand times more than him lost it all arrogance and pride Cost him an eternity in the lake of fire and he was Sitting on his own throne the Bible says at his own kingdom God gave him and he ends up burning in the lake of fire. That's quite a come down that's the biggest failure there ever was. Pride got him. These verses right here. James and John had extrovert personalities. These guys were tough guys, loud, powerful preachers. Where'd they get that? Their mother. <laughs> she comes waddling up to Jesus. Hey, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus Your kingdom's coming. I got much more faith than anybody here. I know you're gonna reign supreme someday Will you do me a favor and put your son on your right hand and what put my other son on your left hand? And will you do that please and the, says it in front of the rest of the disciples? Uh-huh just because you have a thought in your head doesn't mean you ought to share it some things are to be shared in private. No, not with not with uh, James and John's mother. Oh, she had a she should have been a hostess on a live bait boat. She had a mouth the size of New Jersey. Hey, big mouth, mama. Said it in front of everybody. Whoa, that started a church split. Everybody became a Baptist. <laughs> Time to split. Everybody mad now. What happened there though? Oh, it was so perfect. Your temptations and trials are allowed by God to show you what's inside you. As soon as the other knuckleheads heard Big Mama, what was in them manifested. That's why God allows temptations because what's inside you always manifests out. Pride and arrogance, church pride, preacher pride, religious pride, all of it. It's all satanic. One day Jesus took a little kid. Hey, listen, come here. Morons, come on over here. Hey, look. See this kid? Unless you become like that kid, you're, you're not going to make it. Over and over. What was he doing? Satan's greatest sin. Pride. Pride costing his kingdom. Pride will damn your soul to hell. Pride will keep you from getting healed tonight. Pride will keep you from getting delivered. That's right. Jesus spent all kinds of time Rebuking pride in the disciples numerous times and there's the scripture Peter said well, you're never gonna wash my feet And Jesus said oh man Unless you become as a little child you'll never enter into the kingdom of heaven. Unless I wash your feet you can't have any part of me Unless you get rid of your pride and your arrogance you will face judgment and damnation. You'll face a miserable life. You'll die an addict. You'll die broke. You'll die a loser. Because you have no part of me. Oh, Peter wanted to show off in front of the disciples now. He's got it. He's ready. Well, Lord, come on. Is that, is, oh, is that what you want? Well, here, wash my whole body. <laughs> Peter. Said it in front of the whole group. Why? He had a rep in that group. He had a rep of being strong and powerful and aggressive and outgoing. All stemming from deep seated insecurity. I had the exact same thing. I had rejection and low self esteem when I was a kid. I developed in what they called a class clown when I was in grade grade school. I, I, I saw that if I said something or did something funny or stupid, people laughed. I felt better. 
It was all from insecurity Most stand-up comedians are exactly like that. Did you know that they're all either mentally or emotionally ill? I mean they're sick John 13 10 Jesus said listen Peter Aluo, you've already had a bath. You don't need to be washed all over. You just need your feet washed from walking around. But he lets he lets something spiritual out here. Jesus was incredibly what an interesting person he was. He was so spiritual and then so practical, you know. Not like my grandpa used to say, so and so is so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. Jesus was quite the opposite. He was incredibly practical in one moment and then deeply spiritual in another. You know, he goes in and raises Jairus' daughter from the dead. Boop. Then he goes, give her something to eat. He goes from here to, all right, back. Gotta do the usual crap. <laughs> See, if you're so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good, you're no good to God. Okay. One of you, one of you is not clean. He already washed his feet, but he could sense what the devil had put in there was still in there. One of you's not clean. One of you's got that. Lust in there. One of you got that bitterness in there. One of you got that hatred for your parents, and one of you got that drug pull in there. There's something inside that wasn't removed when I washed your feet. One of you still not clean, he says. Jesus knew who was going to betray him. That's why he said, "You are not all clean." Verse eleven, verse twelve. After he washed their feet, he took their garments. He sat down again. He said now I want to teach you something. I don't have much time left So I got to get these most important lessons out now because I'm gonna be gone soon Do you know what I just taught you? Do you know what I did to you? I acted like a house servant a house boy a slave. Why did I do that? He says you call me didascalos you call me teacher and you call me Lord he said and you should call me that because I am your teacher and I am your Lord, right? Absolutely. He's not criticizing him. He's telling him you're doing the right thing If I then I'm your teacher and I am your I am your Lord and your teacher He says if you saw me act like a houseboy and I washed your feet, which is what slaves do Then he said since I'm at the top and I did something at the bottom you then not being at the top should readily do something at the bottom He says, what am I doing here? I'm setting an example for you. Wow. Gosh, his whole life was an example, wasn't it? This is just one of probably millions that aren't even recorded. Verse 15, verse 16. Verily I say to you, the doulos, a slave, is not greater than his Lord. Duh. That's an understatement. Neither is he that is sent. Greater than the person that sent them If you know these things, oh he drops a bomb on us Why does Christianity suck so bad here in America? People are hearers, but not doers of the word They sit around all day long watching YouTube listening to tapes watching DVDs going to Bible studies going to seminars They got so much religious crap stuck in their head. They're no good to anybody they're ever learning, but they never come to the knowledge of the truth. Christianity doesn't work unless you do it. Christianity is a useless, worthless religion if you don't do it. Brother Mike, wow, hold on. Let me sit down on that one. That was, that was deep. Dang, dude. 
See, if you know these things, it doesn't do you any good unless you do them. If you know you shouldn't be doing something, it won't do you any good unless you stop doing it. It's called repentance. God, repentance. Please, get me some crack. Do it. Now Jesus quotes Psalm 41. I speak to not all of you. I know who I chose, but this scripture has to be fulfilled. Psalms chapter 41. My friend turned on me. You don't understand. You've been rejected and betrayed many times over the years, starting with your parents in most cases. Then it went to spouses, and then it's your children that betray you. He understands exactly what you're going through because he was trashed and betrayed by people he loved, people he accepted, people he trusted, betrayed him. Judas stabbed him right in the back. And he gave him a million chances to get out of it. He wouldn't do it. He had a stain of greed. Got to make him more money. That's my God. Now, I tell you, before it comes, so when it comes to pass, you will believe I am. That little Greek phrase is ego in me, and it means it was the equivalent of the Hebrew phrase, I am that I am, that Yahweh used on the burning bush. What was he saying there? Hey, I was at the burning bush. I'm God. And I'm telling you these so that when it happens, you'll know, hey, I knew what I was talking about. I've gotten over 100 phone calls over there. Brother Mike, did he talk to you for a minute? Who's this? So-and-so. Hmm. I pretend I know him. Yeah. Oh, how you doing? Oh God, brother Mike, it happened exactly like you said. My wife left. This fell down. That fell apart. This blew up. That died. I got. I need prayer, dude. Ha you're happy if you, not that you know these things, but you're only happy if you do them. I had a guy come to me a couple weeks and started telling me how I could help him do deliverance. I said, wait a minute, you called me, Jack. What you? I don't know. Truly I say to you, what? He that receives anyone I send is receiving me. Anyone that receives me receives the one who sent me. Ah, now this is better than Reagan trickle down economics. <laughs> this is divinity flowing down to you. Conversely, they who do not receive you are not receiving me, and they did not receive the one who sent me. Uh-huh, so when I get that call, I'm not offended in the least Because it wasn't me they weren't listening to I Couldn't heal them anyway. I only told them what they had to do. You need to quit doing that. And you need to start doing that Listen if you walk out of my office after I've told you to start doing this and stop doing that your life reminds rhymes with this word clucked Uh-huh There's what the Bible says you better start doing it if you don't you're going to be similar to clucked I don't send me an email I censored it <laughs> Yeah, God gave you a chance 
you had every chance to change and you said no I'll do it my way. That's what the devil said. He said I'm gonna do it my way. Oh Man my it's my way or the highway right Oh, he got in deep trouble When Jesus had said this he was troubled in his spirit okay. Now he's starting to feel the pain of this thing When you do what God asks you to do, you know, you actually make him happy He actually has a feel-good sensation about himself it's weird. It's very similar to you as a parent. When your child takes your advice and does it, and it goes well, oh, that kind, of, that kind of feels good. <laughs> that's my boy. Yeah, yep. yeah. You see them on the national news with guns and stuff. That's not your boy anymore. You're you moved out. But when they're little and they're doing what you're saying, oh, that's my boy. There's my girl. There she is. That's the way he looks at you. Oh, that feels good. Look, I told him to do it this way. And they're doing it. Oh, now that's a good son. That's a good daughter. Oh, that's great. That makes me feel good. The Holy Ghost has feelings. That's why the Bible says, grieve not the spirit. Lupeo is a Greek word. It means to make sad. The Holy Ghost can become a sad person. He has emotions. He says, one of you is going to paradidomi completely Surrender me to my adversaries He did everything he could to save Judas the last event he washes his feet at the Last Supper Trying to save it Listen That's got to be speaking to you, isn't it? Does God want to forgive you and help you? I mean for crying out loud that story right there should convince you the rest of your life that you can be forgiven no matter what. Amen. If he's still trying to save Judas on the last day of his ministry, that's incredible. That is truly amazing. I mean, that, that is God's mercy. That is telling you there's hope for you if you're still breathing. If you're not, hey, that's over. We're done with you. So is everybody else. But if you're still breathing, there's a chance you can get healed and delivered tonight Amen. Judas Man a lot of people hate Judas. I don't I see him kind of as a sad figure. I, I See him as a sad person. I I Know this sounds nuts, but in some sense I feel sorry for him You know, it's kind of like my god you had everything and then you lost everything and you had it right you know, he's, he's a weird guy to me But he's very human to me. He's very human Somebody's gonna surrender me tonight somebody's gonna bag me tonight, and he was it was hurting him as you know Jesus then goes through the sop and I left this part out but you know what happens? He says somebody's going to betray me here. What he didn't say was, I did everything I could to get him to stop it or change his mind. He, I washed his feet. He's not changing his mind. I know it's over. It, you don't understand. God's not going to force you to do what's right. You're going to reap what you sow. God's not going to force you to change. He's not going to force you to get healed or get delivered. You're going to reap what you're going to what you sow. And those are the laws of the spirit. Bro. You're going to pay a bad price for your arrogance and your asinine behavior. You're going to pay a terrible price for your vanity and your rebellion. For rebellion is as a sin of which he done everything he could to help that guy. Everything he could. Peter goes, hey, John. He says, hey, find out who it is at the table that's going to be trained tonight. Now, I know what Peter was thinking. He was going to confront the guy. Yeah, Peter wanted to make a scene. You ever met a Christian who likes to make scenes? <laughs> oh, yeah, they're fun, aren't they? Oh, they'll help you. 
Oh, yeah, they'll smooth it out Yeah, they'll, wait till I give them a piece of my mind. And I've only got two and three pieces left my god. I'm down to four Peter was going to confront him. Hey You're gonna betray the Lord. I'm gonna kick your face in yeah, that's a that's a that that's that's how it's done in school, right? Bullies do that. They yell at you so the other kids see it. They're pumping themselves up. They're making a scene. They're making an impression in front of others, right? That's what people with egos do. They make impressions in front of others. John, ask him, Lord, who's who's going to betray you tonight? He says it's the it's the guy I give the bread. I'm gonna dip some bread into the salsa. <laughs> I know where I live. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. It was salsa. <laughs> I'm sure of it. I got it through divine revelation. Um, he, he says, "I'm gonna dip this Dorito." It was a Dorito. <laughs> Sorry, African. Sorry about that. Dorito and salsa. I'm gonna give them whoever I give this sucker to. Whoever I give this to that's the person that's going to betray me and right in front of everybody is unbelievable He reaches in dips And hands it to Judas it says That means that after he washed his feet. He had Judas sit down near him That's unbelievable. Excuse me. What was he trying to tell us here? Oh, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. That's your only way. That's the only way you're ever going to get healed. Holding a grudge against somebody, holding negative feelings against them, holding bad feelings for somebody, that will only keep your cancer. Devouring your bones and your prostate and your breasts. Oh, yeah. Bitterness is one of the roots of cancer. Matthew 5 44 cures cancer. Love your enemies. The person who's going to betray you, here, come sit by me at the Last Supper. I'll wash your feet. Judas would have been able to get out of it on judgment day wouldn't he have had it been gone the other way. Oh easy absolutely Judas I prayed all night come here You're gonna stab me a bat in the back and you're gonna kill me and you're a thief and you suck <laughs> You're on the ministry team <laughs> Yeah, and I know you're rotten. I know you're evil See this is I'm, I'm forcing you to do oh, that's a crock of crap. Listen Judas had every chance to get out of it and so did you yes. On judgment day Judas hadn't got one leg to stand on I had every chance to get out of it and I went ahead and did it because I had a stain on my soul I had greed somebody else has got lust somebody else has got pride whatever that stain is it spreads like cancer It will always end up killing you Judas here. He's sitting right there. He hands it to him. As soon as Judas took it, it was over. Listen carefully, friend. God's going to give you so many chances, and then your chances are going to run out. He's going to offer you one last chance someday. I love you. Take it. Don't do it. Come home. And as soon as that was over, he said, Okay, go do it. Calmly, matter of fact. Yell and scream? Oh, far from it. It was just a little thing between the two of them. Go ahead and do it. Is God going to freak out when you all? Walk away from his final offer to help you? No. Will he be sad? Of course. Will he be hurt? Oh, absolutely. 
hurt. Will he be grieved? Of course. Oh, man. Grieve because he doesn't want to lose you. But you made the choice to keep doing it. You decided you wouldn't change. You kept going back to drugs, and alcohol, and bad men, and rotten women. You kept going back to whoring yourself out. You kept going back to fighting and arguing and bitterness and strife. You kept doing it over and over again. You kept going there. Back to porn. Back to food. Now you're having a heart attack. Now you got diabetes. Now you're dying. Father kept reaching for you. Here's here's here's. Don't oh. He left. He took off. It was over. He never tried to save him again. God's love is eternal, but your chances are not. Go do it quickly then. Verse 29, still in John 13, some of them thought <laughs> because Judas had the bag that Jesus said to him, go buy some things we have need of for the Passover feast and just get... There's nothing more frustrating than working on spiritual matters with church people who have no discernment at all. <laughs> it drives you nuts. And you could tell here, but Judas was sitting beside him because they couldn't quite hear the conversation. So it sounds like they were sitting almost next to each other. John probably sitting over there. Judas sitting right here. Peter had to lean over to John. So my guess is Peter was sitting next to John. I'm just guessing. Obviously, I don't know. And, of course, the church people, ah, they got it all wrong as usual. Yeah, they misread it. They misread you. Somebody looked at you and prejudged you. They looked at you and said, no, nah, that they said this. I thought I thought I heard him say that. I thought I heard him say that. Oh boy. They they hear stuff and they don't get it clarified. So then a false impression is left in the church. And then pretty soon somebody takes an offense, somebody gets hurt. Oh, there's a church split. Bang, everybody becomes a Baptist. <laughs> Start a new denomination. Fighting. Oh, uh, the, the 12 goofs are at it again here. One of the goofs bolted for the door, and the other ones didn't know what was going on. As usual. Having received the sop. Simeon, what is that? I was lying earlier. I said it was a... I lied, but uh, that was a political answer. I live in Phoenix. Uh, yes, sir. It was a self-preservation answer. No, it was it's a piece of bread that's dipped in some goop. Goop's the official name of it. And he did what? He left. He left dinner and left the other ones there. He left his church. He bolted and left God there. He left his friends there. He left the disciples there. He left his ministry there. He left his deliverance ministry there. He left his healing ministry there. He left his crown of life there. And walked out the door. The day's going to come. And I'm warning you. God's going to offer you over and over again. But there's, there's going to be an end to it. You'll, you'll leave for the last time. There's an end to you leaving. You'll leave for the last time. And no one will come get you. Paul called it a seared conscience. You keep sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning and pretty soon your conscience sears. And you can't come back anymore. You're too far gone. You're the walking dead. You're spiritually dead, but you're still alive. Judas walked out on the Last Supper, and at that moment, he was gone. He died spiritually. He left everything behind. What a sad person he was. 
Jesus said, well, now, now, he says, now that that's all taken care of, now that Judas would not change his mind, he rebelled again. Satan took him. You don't understand. If you do not repent and you keep sinning and you keep doing it, and you were given a thousand chances to stop doing it, at some point, the devil has legal rights to take you. Once he takes you, you're gone. You don't come back. He will never be back. Now that Judas made his final choice, it's time for me to be glorified. It's time for Father to be glorified. Verse 32. We will both glorify ourselves. I call it reciprocal glorification. Thank you. I see the envy on your faces. You want to be a Bible scholar like me? <laughs> What was going on there this incredible relationship with these two outstanding incredible individuals was going to be reciprocal Over and over eternally glorifying one another now that Judas had made his final choice Now the devil was going to take over Listen to me carefully if you don't change and you don't stop sinning and you don't make changes in your life at one point, a certain point, the devil is going to take over. When he takes over, you're finished. Because he don't have mercy on people like the Lord does. He don't give you 50,000 chances to change. Oh, not at all. He gives you zero chances to change. If he gets his hands on your throat, he will not hesitate to finish you. That's right. That's not the devil's fault. It was your fault. Little children, a little while I'm with you, but you will seek me. And as I told the Jews, where I'm going, you can't come. And now it's the time, it says, verse 33. Verse 34, he then quotes Leviticus 19, where it says, Yahweh, the great Hebrew God, told them, listen, uh, you got to love your, as yourself. Jesus changes the commandment and he says this is a new commandment that you agapao that is the Greek word for verb for love you have to show your love to one another the way I showed my love to you you also should agapao show love to one another how do you do that? Not like the commandment in Leviticus. We're replacing that with my commandments now. Love has now been expanded. Okay? You don't just act like you love somebody now. Now the Holy Ghost gives you love that's real for others. If you pretend you love somebody, we call that flattery. We call that manipulation. We call that something else some people call it drunk but anyway it says that you love agapao show your love to one another as I agapao showed my love to you by this shall all men know you are my disciples if you have love for one another That's the biggest red flag on Sharia law, isn't it? In Islam, there's not a love, lot of love going on there, is there? Some guy with a stick walks down the street, an imam, and if your ankle's showing, he starts beating the woman. She's improperly dressed. Well. Beating somebody with a stick is not usually a good way to show you love them. Some people in Hollywood will pay for that, but that's a different Bible study. That was a joke for me that I didn't expect you to get. 
that wasn't your joke. That was my joke Listen, you have to show somebody you love them and you can't do that by faking see the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to us okay? I got a news flash for you. You can't love people oh my God, what do you say? Oh, it hurts. No, it doesn't hurt. You ever looked in the mirror? Huh? I don't want to insult you, but you're not that easy to love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what your four ex husbands told you. Um, yeah. Oh my goodness. I'm not no listen. No, let's cut the crap human beings are not capable of divine love They're capable of human love, which is conditional divine love is unconditional Judas sit here by me and I'll wash your feet that is divine Unconditional love no human would have done that they if they had known he was stealing money out of the bag and listen Jesus now trust me He's not stupid. He knew he gave that bag to Judas because he knew he was a thief. He was giving him a chance to repent. God's given you a thousand chances to repent over the years. You kept saying no. Soon you will reach the point where you can no longer say no. You can't come back after a certain point. That's when the devil takes you. And once he got you, he don't let go. Now, this isn't Sharia law where you're beating people and, and no, this is showing love to one another. Showing it. It's a verb. Love is a verb in Christianity. Simon Peter said, Lord, where are you going? Where are you going? Listen, I'm going somewhere and you can't follow me now. He says, you'll follow me later. <laughs> wow. Poor Judas. Never heard them words. And he walked out. He left. He missed it. Really? You're going to miss your destiny. You're going to miss the call of God on your life because you got all these cluttery things. You're jacking around with all the time really is that what really is going to happen to you are you going to walk out the door just as god was about to give you your miracle as soon as judas left this information came out at the same meeting he missed it peter said lord why can't i follow you now he says in front of the others, huh? Huh? Yeah, here we go again. Peter's it's manifesting. See it? See it? The devil will put people and things and circumstances right in front of your face. He'll stick it right in your face because he's trying to get you to manifest what he has planted in there. Okay. <clears throat> Youtubers go ahead and turn your volume down listen <laughs> When I was 20 years old, okay You prance a couple of hot babes my direction. I would have a physical reaction to that boing <laughs> I would have passion I'd be looking at huh? Yeah, listen you you could parade them now down the halls here stark naked and then have them come on here go through there go down that way oh and stay right here you happen to notice that there's no naked women running through here you have to notice that well the devil knows that he's not stupid he doesn't come at me with stuff he knows doesn't work anymore he comes at me with stuff that works he comes at me with stuff that he thinks he's got a shot at. That's right. That's right. Come on, sir. Come 
homie don't do hot babes anymore <laughs> So I don't get any hot babes don't you get it the devil's not stupid. He only gives you what he he thinks you'll do Peter got a little test here. Hey, here's another chance for ego to manifest. Why can't I go with you? Hey, I'll, Lord, I'll tell you what, I'll I'll die for you. Said it in front of James and John. Trying to show them, hey, your mother was out of line. <laughs> I should have the seat next to the YouTube goofs. John won up even though they were going to Samaria that time he said Lord they kicked us out of this town these half-breeds You want me to call fire down from heaven like Elijah and fry their fannies? <laughs> Jesus goes you don't know what kind of spirit you're talking out of right. What spirit was it? Oh, I think I know Yeah, it sounds like the devil wanting to murder and kill and murder. That sounds like him to me Well, John was popping off in front of everybody Look at me. I'm like Elijah. Boom. Fry him. Fry him. Go on. Yeah, it's all over the news right now. Fox News. Fry him. They want Trump to send those missiles over there and cook them. Just cook them. By God, Assad needs to be cooked. I don't know anything about that, but I do know human ego and pride I've been a counselor for 37 years. It's very easy to spot very easy I'll die for you Lord Man Jesus had one more thing he had to take care of it wasn't just Judas. It was the day of Pentecost He had to help us save us it was the day of Pentecost at the Last Supper it was Peter the buffoon was going to preach the biggest sermon in history. Day of Pentecost. So Jesus says, "You sacrifice, okay? You would give me your soul tonight, Peter." That's what he said. I'll give you my soul. That's a pretty big statement. Will you lay down your soul for my sake? Jesus said, "I'm telling you the truth before the." Rooster crows You're going to deny me three times now this Greek words really interesting It doesn't translate here Our parnao mind means to utterly and completely reject me He Jesus pulled a Peter he said it in front of everybody else That's right Yeah yeah, you run your mouth in public Sometimes God will allow the devil to embarrass you in public Uh-huh Yeah, at least once a week I pray and ask God please don't let my button break here my pants drop <laughs> Once a month I pray that prayer don't don't let me lose my something weird happen up here. I look like an idiot on YouTube <laughs> I pray for hidden sins because I'm afraid I've got it coming. <laughs> I know you're going to completely and totally reject me tonight. You're not just going to say, I don't, no, I don't, no, nah. no, that didn't happen. You're going to come with everything you've got. You don't even know me. James and John heard that. Well, maybe my mom was right. <laughs> Listen, what was God doing there? He scoured through all of them. <sighs> he found one of them that wasn't clean. Man, the Holy Ghost is awesome. He can scan through a crowd of millions, pick out each one.
individually. He doesn't see crowds. He sees individuals. Jesus scanned the little His little group there. They're all sitting there he looks around. He says one of you is not clean One of you is not clean Let's pray then Father God I thank you from the bottom of my heart for John chapter 13. That was fantastic. Watching Jesus wrap up his earthly ministry and the things that he did to try to save Judas. I saw your love in that chapter, Lord. <clears throat> it's phenomenal. I also saw human free will in that chapter. I also saw great sadness in that chapter. I was hurt and sad watching Judas Peter Peter's ego run wild again you know why I was sad Lord because I'd done that in my past my ego ran away with me numerous times over the years Lord there's some people here tonight that are not clean and they want to be clean there's some people here tonight. I did the best I could to warn them that your grace and your mercy only extends so far. And that sooner or later, every person has an appointed time to die. And after this, there's judgment. And tonight, Lord, I cannot let that happen to any of my friends at the Deliverance Center. I can't stand that. That makes me sick to my stomach. I don't want to see anybody lost. I don't want to see anybody miss their destiny or their call. That makes me sick. And I know if it hurts me, it's got to be chilling you. So I want you to be happy tonight. Every person in this room that's not clean, and you know who you are. I don't. I have no idea. It's not about me. It's about you and the Holy Ghost tonight. You know what you've been doing. You know you've been given chance after chance to change. You were told numerous times by the Holy Spirit in your conscience, stop taking drugs. Stop drinking. Stop smoking. Stop cursing. Stop lying. Stop stealing. Stop it because I love you. Stop it because you're opening doors to demons and the devil is going to come in. And when he gets his hands on your throat, he will not let go. Tonight, Somebody is not clean and wants to be clean If you know you're not clean and you don't want to be clean We love you anyway, and I pray you will keep coming back to the deliverance center and when you're ready we will be here for you, but God is warning you Presumptuous sins are mentioned in the Bible Presumptuous sinning Will catch up to you Sooner or later It will open a door that you would give anything You to left shut Now if you aren't clean tonight and you need prayer I want you to just raise your hand so I can pray with you There's a few there's some few over there. You there's a couple things in your life. You got to get rid of There's some more there's over there. There's three. There's more. There's something in there and you know the devil's got a hook in you almost like a fish hook and that things in there it's materialism it's a lust it's bitterness for somebody it's negative emotions it's ought it's something something's in there you know it's in there 
and you know the Holy Ghost knows it's in there like Jesus saw into Judas the Spirit of the Lord can see into you tonight you know that raise your hands Lord you see these hands right here these are your servants that want to be healed they want to be delivered they want the devil out of their lives they want their destiny they want their anointing they want their call that's why they raise their hands they do not want to live like a carnal Christian anymore they do not want to live with any form of uncleanness in them anymore that's why they raise their hands I know you can see them Lord because I, I know you see everything and I'm praying right now for those hands that went up every person raise their hand father I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus for a special gift of grace to be placed on them tonight so they can be healed I'm asking right now for a special gift of mercy to be placed on them right this second you see their hands some of them are not clean father God the ones that are clean that didn't raise their hands I pray you're Anointing your blessing on their lives. I pray you bless their ministry. I pray you make them fruitful and powerful in the spirit But tonight the ones that raise their hands must be set free All right now if you want to be set free and you raise your hand come down in front here so I can pray with you tonight The Holy Ghost wants to touch you. I cannot help anybody or heal anybody. You already know that the Spirit of the Lord is here he has the blood of Jesus. He has the broken body of Jesus Christ. You can be healed tonight. You can be delivered tonight. If you will open your heart, and you will repent of your sin. If you will open your heart and repent of your sin, you do not have to end up like Judas and walking out just before God got to all the good stuff. He left one minute too soon he was that close he was that close you've been that close to being killed you were that close getting caught by the cops you were that close dying drunk you were that close that close and God saved you that time but if you keep tempting the Lord the end is going to come for you like it did poor Judas he died and went to hell can you imagine going from a superpowered faith healer he was casting out demons in droves but he had a stain on his soul greed got him money got him money killed Judas he wanted security like cash Greedy, right? Mercy, Lord. Close your eyes now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. See these people here, Lord? Every one of them you're madly in love with. Every single one of them. Some of them have been nasty sinners. Some of them haven't. It doesn't matter. You care and you love. You want to help them. And they're ready to repent now. They're ready to repent. They saw Judas lose everything. And they are not going to be like him. They're not going to be like Peter. They're going to change like Peter did. Living in ego. These people standing here, Lord, they want to become servants of the Most High God. Slaves. Slaves who feel comfortable washing people's feet. People who feel comfortable loving someone, giving to them. Caring for them, not an addict, not a rageaholic, not an anger ridden fool, not a drug addict, not a sex addict. They don't want that, Lord. They want the Holy Ghost. They want the Holy Ghost. Raise your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, help me. Lord Jesus, save me. Come on, pray now. Come on. Lord Jesus say there you go good lights are down no one can see you on YouTube the lights are down They can't see when the lights are down Lord have mercy on my soul. That's how you do it Have mercy on my soul. Lord. I need help. I need help. I need help help Sweet Jesus help me. I'm in trouble help me. 
It's my fault. I got myself in trouble. I'm not blaming anybody anymore. I've repented of that. I need a miracle, God. Please help me. Please rid me of this wickedness and this evil. I am not clean. I am not clean. There's something in there. There's a spirit in there. There's a wound in there. There's sin in there. There's a wicked desire in there that has to come out. I want it out tonight, Lord. I need it out now in the name of Jesus. I need it out right now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want it out tonight. Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth. God, save me, Lord. Save me, Lord Jesus. us our sins and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness I repent of the bad feelings I have for my husband or my wife I repent of it right now in the name of Jesus I repent of it right now I repent of it right now arrogance and pride and stupidity anger I repent of it right this second now I repent of it now pride and arrogance now Satan I command you in the name of Jesus I command you to loose me right now loose me right now Loose me, Satan. Loose me, Satan. Loose me right now. I command you in the name of Jesus. I release him right now. I let him go. I command the spirit of fear and anxiety to come out of me right this second. I command you to come out, spirit of fear and lust and anger. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Come out right now. Go in Jesus' name. Come out of me right now. Go in Jesus' name. Stupidity and ignorance. I command you to come out of me. Come out right now in the name of the Lord. Come out right now. Leave me now. Leave me now. All those years of people criticizing me and saying negative things about me, taking me for granted, using me. God, have mercy on my soul. Use it. There it is. Let your tears go. Go on, sweetie. That's the Holy Ghost touching you. That's the Holy Ghost touching you. Just repent of it. Come on. Everybody uses me. Everybody takes me for granted. The Holy Spirit doesn't use you. He doesn't take you for granted. The Holy Ghost would never do that. Out every spirit from my husband in the name of Jesus. I command you to come out of me right now. There it is. Let your tears go. Let your that's the Holy Ghost touching you. Come on now. Holy Spirit of God, help me. I'm wasting my life. Come on, ladies. Every bad man that ever touched my body from my teenage years to this moment, I command them to come out of me. Right now. Adultery and fornication. I command you and come out. Drugs and cursing and swearing and violence violence and hatred come out in Jesus mighty name arrogance and pride come out in the name of Jesus go go from me now Satan loose your hold go from me now come out come out of me put your hands on your body put your hand on your body in the name of Jesus spirit I command you come out of me right now drugs the demon pushing me to take drugs. Come out. Go. <sighs> Lust. Pornography. Lust. Come out of me right this second. Right now. Right now. Every, every demon infected man that ever touched me, ever transferred a spirit into my body, I command you to come out now. Go. into my body every man I ever slept with come on ladies every man you ever slept with a transfer to spirit in your body has got to come up tonight come on guys you were out whoring around you slept with somebody you should have never slept with 
You slept with a woman that had witchcraft in her background, masonry in her background, voodoo in her family tree. Some spirit transferred into you during intercourse. You better repent of it. You better repent of it now. Adultery and fornication, oral sex, I bind your power. I command you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come out now. Come out now. Come out. Oral sex. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out now. Come on, ladies. Your husband cheated on you. Then he came home and he slept with you. He brought home a transfer spirit. That spirit has to come out. Your husband's an adulterer. Your wife was an adulteress. When she slept with somebody else, she picked up a spirit from that person, then brought it home to you. You can transfer spirits. You can transfer spirits. You better repent of it. Satan, I command you in Jesus' mighty name, come out. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Now listen, if you were molested as a child, if you were molested when you were young by your parents, your stepdad, a babysitter, cousin, somebody, if you were molested, a spirit transferred into your body, a spirit transferred into your body, that spirit of rejection let in other spirits. One of them was a lust spirit. That lust spirit drew in partners over the years. That's why you got married so many times. That's why you've had so many broken relationships. Because that spirit brought you bad partners. Bad relationships. That demon got in your brain and then like a beacon, like sonar, drew in bad people into your life. And you know what those bad people did? They broke your heart, they wasted your time, they stole your years, they stole your money, you have nothing left now because you've wasted everything. You have become a waste. Because when you got molested as a child and somebody wounded you, that spirit of rejection entered your body and he took over your life. And he jacked you up. Come out. Get out of there quicker. Come out quicker. Quicker. Quickly. That rejection spirit destroyed you. He destroyed you. And if you do not get him out, the rest of your life will be like the previous years. You will die broke. You will die a complete failure. He must come out. He must come out. You've been married five times. You've, you've had 50 relationships. You're all alone. You're broke. Okay. That's him. That's him. Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of my head. Come out of my head right now. Stop stealing my money. Stop wasting my years. Stop sending me one bad relationship after the other. Fear, come out. Come on, honey. Get him out of there. Fear, come out. Get out of me. Get out. Say it. Get out. Say it harder. Fight harder. Say it harder. There it goes. Come out. Come out, devil. There it comes. There it comes. Hold that. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. If you have had one broken relationship after the other, dude, you are screwed. Here's why you're screwed. A spirit, come out. Come out of there. Get the rest of them out of there. Come out of there. The reason you're screwed is because you let that spirit in, or if you were a kid, your parents let it in. Your abuser let it in. 
This guy standing here just got his gift of tongues. Crank it out. Come on now, just repent of it. You got to repent of it. I repent of loving my husband. Just repent of it. Just confess it. If you won't confess it, you can't get healed. If you don't confess it, you can't get healed. Listen, you can't put up a front with the Holy Ghost. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. I'm so sorry. Say that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Lord, give this man of God back his tears. Give him his tears. Give him back his tears. Come out, devil. There it comes. Give him back his tears, Lord. A Holy Ghost cry for this man. A Holy Ghost cry. Come out, devil. Come out of his brain. Come out of there quickly. Quicker. Heal. They're coming out right now. That's them. Come out. Go. Go now. Go right now. Come out right now. Get out of my head. There he comes. Get out of my head. Come out of my head. Right now, go. Say it. Come out right now. Go. Come on, every man. All these guys. Go. Come on. Get out of my head, I said. Stop blocking my tears. Get out of my... Say hold of my family right now. Every demon is fighting. Come out right now. Get out of my head right in a second. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Go. Go, I said. Go now! Go now! Now! Say it! Repent of your fear. Repent of your fear right now. Repent of being self-conscious. Repent of it. Shyness. Repent of it. Just repent of it. Come on. Repent of it. Father, I'm so sorry. That's how you do it? Father, I'm so sorry. Father, I'm so sorry. Come out right now. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Fight harder. You fight harder. Now. You fight harder now. Fear a man. Come out of me now. Go. Come out of there, you pervert. Come out of my womb. Come out of my vagina. Come out of there, you pervert. Come out. Come out of my breast right now. Come out of my breast. You pervert, come out of me right now in Jesus' mighty name. I curse every evil spirit in this building right now. I bind your power by the authority of the word of God. By the authority of the word of God. I command you, come out, witchcraft and sorcery. Come out. Insanity, mental illness, bipolar, schizophrenia, I bind your power. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Get out. Get out right now. Right now. Get out of my body right now, I said. Come out. Go. Get out of there, I said. Pray harder. Pray harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. I repent of carrying burdens for my granddaughter because the devil's using her to hurt me. It's right in here. I can feel it. I command every spirit from my I repent I repent of it right now. I repent of carrying burdens for other family members. I repent of it right this second. I command it to come out. I release my granddaughter to the Lord. I let her go. Now, I release my granddaughter. Go. I release my dysfunctional family to God. I release all the demons in my family. I command them to leave me. Right now, I repent of carrying burdens over people's lives. That's a sin. I repent of carrying burdens. That's a sin. I'm not loving anybody more than the Lord from this day forward, including my husband. I command. 
idolatry to go. If you love someone more than you love the Lord, that's idolatry. Louder. Louder. Fight harder. Get him out of there. Spirit of fear, I command you to come out of me right now. Spirit of cowardice. Spirit of shyness. There they go. They're coming out now. There it goes. Come out. Come out right now. Go. Let's go. Come out right now. Go. Go right now. Go. There they go. They're coming out now. Thank you, Jesus. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Stop growling and come out. Hurry up. Come out. Come out right now. Ephesians chapter 1 says that you are blameless in Christ. That means that what you did in the past has been forgiven, and you are no longer to blame. It is not your fault anymore. That blame stayed at the cross of Calvary. The blame for what happened in your past is no longer yours. Just repent of it. Lord, I repent of receiving blame. How's she doing now? Oh, Anna, girl, see, you have the anointing. You're just not fighting. You have it. Okay. Fight harder. Okay. Satan, come out of me right now. That's how you talk to the devil. You can't handle the devil casually. See, you can't just sit there and think about the devil. You can't just sit there and think about him. You got to take him on. You got to fight back. You can't sit there and do nothing and expect the devil to leave you. He's not going to leave you. The devil is a gorilla fighter. The devil's a gorilla fighter. He fights dirty. Okay? He fights dirty. He's smart. If you're smart, he's smarter. He'll outthink you. Okay, you got to fight back and fight back hard. You can't sit there and do nothing because you will reap what you sow. And if you don't believe me, take a look at the last two years of your life. Take a look at the last two years of your life. If you don't believe me, you're going to reap what you sow. Your life sucks, and you're a failure. And the last two years of your life proves it, and God is telling you, you cannot go easy on the devil anymore. You cannot be casual like these two. You cannot be casual with the devil. You cannot be casual. You got to fight back. Fight now. Now. You fight now. Now. I'm showing you. I'm showing you. Are you blind? There you go. He doesn't understand. Yeah. There it is. Good. You got to fight back. You can't just stand there like a totem pole in a gift shop. You got to fight back. Satan, there's a new sheriff in town. You can't stand there like a totem pole and get a miracle from God. What are you, nuts? Have you lost your mind? Fight back now. Fight back now. Fight. Fight for your life. Fight for your children. Fight for your grandchildren. Come on. Fight back now. Fight. By the authority of the word of God, I command you, Satan, loose your hold. Fight back now. Don't stand around like you're a stick in the mud doing nothing. Fight back now. 
Fight back now! Fight back now! Fight back now! Fight back now! Say that I command you! I don't know how to fight back. What do you mean? I've been modeling it for you for 10 minutes. Fight back now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out now, devil. Come on, sweetie. Fight harder. Fight back now. Brother Mike, can you just flip a switch and I'll feel better? No. Nobody can flip a switch so you feel better. Each person has to exercise their own faith in God. You have to develop your own faith in God. Come on, Satan. I command you. I command you. Come out. Come out. Come out now. Come out now. I hate you. Come out now. I hate you. Come on now. Where's your holy hatred? Jesus had it. He cleansed out the temple. He took a whip into the temple and drove out the money changers. You must do the same in your body. Your body's the temple of the Holy Ghost. Not, not a tent for demons. Come on, you must drive out the money changers. Had Judas done that, he would not be burning in hell as I'm speaking to you now. Judas never drove out the money changers. Jesus took a whip. He took a whip. It was a cat of nine tails. He took this whip into the temple. He drove out the money changers. He forced them to go. You turned my father's house into a Walmart. Get out! He overturned the money changers tables. You're going to stand there and do nothing while the devil rips you and your family to pieces? Have you completely lost your mind? Are you completely nuts? Come on now, fight back. If you take a step of faith, the Holy Ghost will fight with you. If you sit there thinking about it, you're going to get nothing from God. Judas lost everything because he was thinking too much. He was thinking too much. Come on, fight back. This lady up here is getting delivered. The demons are flying out of her when she first started. Nothing happened. Nothing happened, but she kept going. She wouldn't give up. Keep she kept going. She wouldn't give up. Push your way in. Push your way in. If you can speak in tongues, come on, can you come up and help me for a second? If somebody else can speak in tongues, come over here and help me real quick. If you can speak in tongues, can you come up here for a second? I'm going to pray for this guy here. I just got through talking to some guy at the altar here. The devil had given him nine lies about speaking in tongues. Uh, all the lies were negative. Yeah. All the lies are negative. The devil does not want you speaking in tongues because it increases your spiritual power, it increases your prayer life, and it allows you to pray for your relatives and friends, and the devil doesn't know what you're praying. It's like a secret CIA code. Once you learn to pray in tongues, it drives the devil nuts because he doesn't know what you're saying. And the Holy Spirit's interpreting what you're saying and then applying it in your life. If you don't speak in tongues because, like this guy, somebody gave you nine false statements about it and you believe those statements, you're going to end up on pornography, broke, 
spiritually dead, divorced, and you're going to die alone. Welcome to the care center. If you don't want to go to the care center, you better hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, if my people, which are called by my name, shall do what? Humble themselves. And do what? Pray. And do what? Seek my face. And do what? Turn from their wicked ways. Then, says the Lord, then, and only then, will I hear them from heaven. I will forgive their sin. And I will heal their land. If you're going to do it your way and not that way, welcome to the world of being screwed. You are screwed. You do it God's way or you go down. There is no other way. You do it God's way or you go down. Period. This isn't, this isn't rocket science. Okay. This isn't NASA. It's simple truths from God's word. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you will be sozo, delivered. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You need to put your hand on your head and get those seducing spirits out of your brain that keep telling you to analyze God's Word and think about it and mull it over and process it. By the end of the day, you're going to be more confused than you were when you started. Repent and believe the gospel, Jesus said. Repent. And the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Several people got delivered from demons down here tonight. You know why? They opened their hearts and they repented. The people that didn't get delivered from demons kept sitting around thinking about it, trying to figure it out, processing it over and over again. And they said, you know what? I can't quite figure this out. Maybe I need somebody to wave a magic wand over me and pray over me and I'll be better. No! You're not going to get better. You're not going to get healed. You are ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Come on now. The devil told you that God doesn't love you and he doesn't want to help you. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a filthy life. The word of God says. The word of God. God is not slack concerning his promises, as other, others are slack. But he is long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. How do you repent? You admit what you did was wrong, and then you simply raise your arms and say, Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. Lord, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Come on. That's how you do it. If you don't have any sorrow and you don't care, well, what the, how do you expect to get healed? You need to join a cult. Listen, you got to repent from the heart. Father God, I'm so sorry. Repent. And the times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. But you got to repent first. You got to take the first step. You got to make the first move. Okay? This is not rocket science. You go first. Then the Holy Ghost goes second. You pray first. Then God will heal you second. It's that simple. Push your way in. Lord Jesus, I love you. <laughs> 